That's the journey with Jesus is Jesus can, can take into our lives and begin to change our lives one day, one step, one moment at a time. And he can take the broken things in our lives and mend them and fix them and pour his grace upon them. He's not just the savior, he is also the healer. Jesus makes this clear when he one time had uh, a question from John the Baptist who was in prison about to be beheaded and had some doubt about, okay, Jesus, are you the Messiah or do we look for someone else? And Jesus gave this response. He said, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame, they're walking. Those who have leprosy, cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And with that, that moment, with this scene of this paralytic getting off the mat and being healed, they experience what the prayers for everyone on this earth to experience, and that's the glory of Jesus, the glory of God. It says in verse 12 that as a result, they were astounded and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. When someone's life is turned around, you naturally want to give God the glory. Amen? Amen. Jesus came to this earth. He says the world, the word, John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and full of truth. Wow. What an amazing thing to see a life saved by God, who was brought to Jesus by some people in his life who cared enough to put him in the pallet and get that pallet to Jesus. My question is, who's going to be in the chair because of you? Who are you going to carry to Jesus next Sunday? This trip with our New York friends, I met Ryan and um, his, his dad, Rich. And um, Ryan tells me his story. And I'm like totally blown away <laughs> because I have on my mind, you know, that I'm preaching about the paralytic who received a spiritual healing and a physical healing. And I heard his story. I'm like, Ryan, we got we to gotta share that story. And so I want you to welcome to the stage our friends from New York, Ryan and his dad, Rich, uh, who are going to come and share a story that I believe will bless your life. You guys, come on up. morning so it was about seven years ago Ryan was in a really bad accident and I got a call from my daughter said come quick Ryan's been in a bad accident and I got there and there he was laying in the street he got hit by a car over 50 miles an hour he's just laying there I didn't know if he was alive or dead and I'm just I didn't had no power I'm just over him not knowing what to do I thought I was a strong individual and I could get through anything. And I was just saying, go to Jesus. That's all I can say. And he was rushed to the hospital and his mom and me followed him and family started to come into the hospital and getting through it. Finally, the doctors came and invited his, um, his mom and myself into the room. And we were told that they did everything they possibly could. And it didn't look good and Ryan wasn't going to make it. So it was like a knife going through my heart. 
And he said, go home, try to get rest. Tomorrow's going to be a long day. And I just remember collapsing there on the floor. And the things I thought were so important just faded away, and I was in darkness. And I'm just crying out to God. I'm sobbing. And help me, God. Help me. I'm so sorry. Help me, God. And I felt the Spirit fill me, got me up on my feet, got me home. About 4 o'clock in the morning, I heard a voice go back to the hospital. And there's Ryan, hooked up to all the wires and everything, still alive. So people start coming into the hospital the next day. We're with the doctors. And they said, yeah, his injuries, he had a traumatic brain injury. His shoulder was shattered. His femur was broken in half. His pelvis was shattered. And it was just horrible. And they said, with these injuries, 90 to 95% don't come out of the coma. And the 5 to 10% that come out of the coma are in a vegetative state. And I just had this peace that was beyond all understanding in me. And we just took it one day at a time and was watching a miracle. So when the family was dealing with that, trusting in Jesus, Ryan was having his own experience. I was in this, this black place, this, this dark absence of light, absence of sound. I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't touch anything. I didn't know where I was, but I still had my thinking. I still had my conscious conscience. And I, I was there for a long time. I, I didn't know what to do. I was so nervous, so scared. scared of the, more scared than I've ever been in my life. And a vision came into my mind when I was in second grade in religion. I used to be Catholic. And the religion teacher saying, go to Jesus whenever you need of help. Whenever you're in need of help, go to Jesus. <laughs> what could I do? I needed, I needed Jesus. I said, Jesus, help me. God, help me. I felt myself start to rise, rise, rise. I thought to myself, am I dying? Is, is this it? What happened to me? So before I know it, who's in front of me? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is in front of me. Beautiful, beautiful beyond all our understanding. Uh, you just felt so much love from him, so much understanding, so much just uh, his heart. You feel his heart and heart with you. You feel his presence. You're so aware of his presence being right there with you. So... I, I then had a life review. Everything positive that I ever did or said happened before me. It's like I, I saw my life on a review. And it was, I felt so good for the positive things I did or said. So good for those. And then I felt so negative, so bad for the bad things I did or said. And I knew I needed forgiveness. So Jesus, that you know, the life review ended. And Jesus said, Ryan, do you believe in me as your Lord and Savior? Flat out, he asked me like that. Do you believe in me as your Lord and Savior? I said, I do. And then he said, do you come to me for the forg forgiveness of your sin, of your sins? And I said, I do. I need your forgiveness, Jesus. He put out his right hand, and this is the best feeling of my life. Put out his right hand, smiled, and said, Ryan... Welcome to my kingdom. Transitioned into heaven. Saw my family members passed, that passed on. Um, his grandfather that passed away when I was a year old. My great-grandfather. And um, it was so great. The, the feeling I could put it is Christmas morning when I was five years old. About 100,000 times better. And that number grows every time I tell the testimony. <laughs> So it, it was, oh, no words can explain what God has in store for us. And so having so much, such a great time, an enlightening time in heaven, Jesus comes back up to me. And whenever Jesus wants to speak to you, oh, how glorious that is. And he says, Ryan, you have to go back. You have special things to do. And woke up from the coma. I learned how to talk again, walk again, 
eat again, even sleep again almost. <laughs> so when, when, you know, as Pastor Brian said, you have to be born again. Yeah, I, I know what that. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's my testimony. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, I, we didn't get these for you to see this morning, but Ryan uh, shared the videos and pictures of him and this apparatus as God brought him back um, from a place where he couldn't walk and couldn't talk uh, to standing before us here today as a miracle. And um, I thought... And I wept when he told me this story. I thought, how much this parallels the story of the paralytic. You know, the concern with Jesus was not first about his healing. It was about his soul. Did he believe in him? Was he born again? And he was able to communicate that uh, to the Lord. And, and then came his physical healing. And um, what an amazing, amazing Testimony, and I just want to pray for these guys, and and uh, and I want us to I want to pray for us. Um, if you would, um, before before we pray, there's a little card that looks like this. If you'll pull that out, and before we just go into prayer, maybe some of you did this last week, but do it today, right now, if you can. By faith, remember we talked about having faith, your faith, leaning into someone else's faith. By faith, who do we want in that chair? Who do you want in that chair? Who are you going to invite and pray for in that chair? And if you would put their name in that slot, because we want to lift them up here in just a moment. And um, Dad, would you say prayer works? Yeah. Just like how Pastor, Pastor Brian said, how, how meaningful it could be for you to speak Jesus into someone's life. If my second grade religion teacher wasn't in my life, didn't tell me about the glory of Jesus, to be saved only by Jesus, who knows what I would have done. Amen. <laughs> Thank God that person planted that in you, that you were able to pull that up at the moment. Amen. Amen and amen. So prayer. <laughs> we talked about it last week, but there's four things that you would say that I'll pray for this person. I'll pray consistently, moment by moment, passionately. We talked about that today. Persistently. We talked about that today. And expectantly. God, you're going to do this and we're going to knock down any obstacle <laughs> that's in the way. And we're going to get them to Jesus. And we're going to let Jesus do the rest. Amen? So let's pray. Lord, we come to you today and we just thank you that we can witness and see a true miracle in front of us here today. And God, we know that you're the God of miracles. And uh, more importantly, Lord, you're the God of salvation. And Lord, you desire for every single person to come to know you to be born again, to experience a spiritual birth, to be in heaven with you in paradise when we die. So Lord, I pray right now for every soul in this room and every uh, potential influence they have among their family, their friends, their coworkers, their neighbors, person at the grocery store, to be able to just do what you would want them to do, to invite them to sit in a chair where, God, you could powerfully give them the opportunity to come to know you. And Lord, we don't know, just like this second grade teacher, we don't know how powerful one word 
is about you that we would share with a friend that would one day be used in bringing that friend to Christ. So, Father, right now we, we just want to lift up all these names that are on these cards and the more names that will come during this week. And we're praying, Lord, that next week that they would walk in this room and, Father, that they would experience uh, the hope of Christ and, Lord, that, they, that the journey would begin for them to come to know Christ ultimately as their Savior and their Lord. Maybe you're here today and you, you, di you didn't know Christ walking in this door and maybe today's your day <laughs> to give your life to Christ. And just as Ryan experienced, it's Jesus, the same Jesus saying, do you believe in me? If the answer is yes, then the, biblically you're just a, a word, an acknowledgement, a prayer away from him being your savior. As it says in Romans that if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and you believe that he was raised on the third day and confess that to him, you would be saved. And so right now in this moment, if that's you, then just pray a prayer, something like this. Jesus, today, yes, I believe in you. I believe also that I'm a sinner and I need to be forgiven. I believe you died on the cross for me and my sins and that you were raised on that third day. I now invite you to be my Savior, my Lord, from this day forward. And Lord, for the rest of us in this room, may today take us a step further in our passion for living out Christ among our friends. God, use us for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen.